because no matter where you live and who you are, the one thing nobody can ever take away from you is your dream. All extraordinary things are opposed and ridiculed at first. My name is Jari Kuosma. I'm the owner and founder of Birdman LTD, which is the creator of the first commercial wingsuit. Back in those days, almost everybody who had done this before had died. The strange guy comes from Finland with a strange suit that everybody has been <laughs> afraid of. Uh, you have to do some convincing. In the beginning of the 1999, just when I was about to start this the wingsuit company, I was telling about the idea to my friends, more experienced friends. I remember they were laughing at my face. They just thought that I had completely lost it. Jumping, of course, the first time, you had to overcome your fears and you had to be absolutely convinced that, that uh, you did it better than, than all those other guys. You have to think of yourself that, am I willing to do this? Am I willing to risk everything what I have to achieve your life? Then you take that leap of faith. I knew it was working right away. I felt this incredible freedom. It was the best moment of my life. I knew that that this was the future. And now we know it is. So, in English, welcome, Yari Kuosma Birdman, and it's always a pleasure to see you. You're you're the, one of the most happiest faces I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Sini. It's really, really great to be here. So thank you very much uh, for inviting me again. And yeah, you're like the one of the most positive people I know, and I'm amazed about your life and your stories. And and uh, thank you for joining us today. And uh, I hope to hear a lot of your adventures because this this video will be made for the fathers for the Father's Day of Scandinavia in Sweden and Finland. It's the same time on Sunday. And uh, in in November, which is surprising because it's completely in a different day in many countries across the world. So uh, we'll be making this broadcast for the fathers and make them feel happy about your adventures and, and uh, different kind of skydiving experiences. So how are you doing over there, by the way? Oh, I'm, I'm doing absolutely fantastic so so and it's really interesting that we we have this uh recording today on the father's day and the subject matter uh that you are introducing i i think that it's uh quite suitable so so first of all i would like to say happy father's day to all fathers um and i i i guess um Happy Father's Day to my father too, although he can't be uh, listening to this right now because he passed away 35-ish year, years ago or so, something like that. But but he was definitely an uh, uh, inspiration for me and, as they say, like father, like son. So so if, if we're <laughs> going to be talking about my adventures, I guess uh, uh, my father is at, at, at least quite uh, largely... Uh, responsible for those ad adventures and so i tribute to 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 all this show now to or not only to the oceans and and uh, our team there but to the fathers yeah that sounds so lovely and i have the same uh, story my father also passed on uh 2019 but we carry the father always in the heart there's nobody uh, the same there's only one father and very special role in our lives. So um, I enjoy his memory very much and I hold him really precious and I'm very proud of him in many ways. So he made me courageous towards the world. So I'm very grateful as well. So he was a fun father. And uh, so let's let's hold for our fathers in our hearts and in our in our minds with great gratitude and and bring joy to all the fathers across with this little video. And uh, I was just looking at the world map and I was thinking in my mind, gosh, you must have flown uh, above and, and uh, been in skydiving across the whole world in so many areas. So which was your 
favorite sky to jump from and uh, which was the favorite ocean that you saw you saw from the from the heights of the skies that's a very very good question and and a very large question as well i've been jumping in over 40 different countries and i have been always extremely interested of the people the geography the cultures uh, and the history of those places where I go with always much more questions than 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 answers and and always with the extremely open uh, uh, attitude to to just suck in and, and learn as much as I can and and not to give uh, any of my own uh, prejudices uh, to the to the place and people because that's the only way well at least for me that that uh, I felt that I can learn the most so so every place have their very very unique things and very unique people very unique culture and and as and they all together make the whole so so for me as a skydiver uh, it was always very interesting to see the whole bigger picture and especially when you, when I, when I'm looking down from 13000 feet or 4 kilometers height um you see things a little bit differently at least that time you're up there and then then you have to return to the earth <laughs> <laughs> and, and then again, you see things from from another perspective. But 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 yeah, so they are, they are different things and give you give you this perspective. But 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 when you ask about uh, different uh, places, that, yeah, I I don't have any any favorite place, but I have memorable memories from every place I've been. And I guess the first thing I I'd like to mention is is uh, Norway because Norway is extremely. Um, interesting place first of all is geography is is amazing it's it's uh not from this world it's not from the flatlands that's for sure <laughs> that the, the contrast there in in the rocks and so on it's just amazing and and also the weather it, it can change within minutes uh from from almost tropic tropical to the to the freezing icy cold hails and and raining and and so on so you have to be all the time uh, um kind of prepared for the worst i, I would say is <laughs> is something very memorable and of course that makes people too you know um different from the, from the place where, where the let's say the environment is all the time the same um, what about uh if suddenly the weather does change in the air what happens then have you had those experiences that you you come from a like a sunny warm day and suddenly the breeze is cold so what do you do then oh absolutely uh <clears throat> well it depends when you jump at what height and and what happens to be the weather but but uh the temperature change can be really significant um let's say it can be easily some, sometimes you know in these hard conditions it can be 30 40 degree weather change just within the minute and, and then of course the winds can change from from um extremely high high top top winds uh to the calm underneath they can also uh, flip 180 you know depending where you are because because the air, air uh, uh pushes you this direction from from the top layers and then to that direction from from below so you have to be all the time especially when you navigate when you are flying in there you're, you're truly flying but you don't have a, a engine except your own gliding abilities uh, uh you have to kind of sense where the where the wind is going and, and use your all senses so so it's extremely interesting environment and teaches you a lot about uh nature <laughs> and and um how we are just part of the nature but we are part of the nature and we have to cope in that wow that's so fascinating and what comes to mind like this um video today is for the fathers across the world not only in scandinavia even though our father's day is now on sunday but but it's for all fathers across and of course, comes to mind adventure and maybe some masculine uh, trials and exploring. And here in Scandinavia... Do you want to hear we... about the adventure? Can you please tell me. Okay, 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 because this is related to the uh, different different part of the world and, and a little bit of adventure, I would guess, and also to the oceans. So it's been like... <clears throat> I think it was your... 
2000 or something like that so some some time ago but anyway i was hired to to travel to south africa and and uh, make a flight for nelson mandela because it had it, it had been a decade or something like that since he got freed from from uh, uh jail and and uh, so i was supposed to do a stunt and and flying from on top of the robin island that was the island where they kept the the inmates there and then fly uh, on top of that to freedom so to speak to the mainland uh over i think seven kilometers straight uh of of uh, really heavy sea currents and and things like that <clears throat> and we were supposed to have international team and the airplane that took us high enough so that we can make the flight but but then they ran out uh, ran to the, some financial problems and and in the end the, uh, the the international team was just me and then we had a little Cessna so we could we couldn't get the complete altitude and I had to had to um I, I couldn't get so much altitude which also meant that it was very difficult to to then then uh fly fly, fly the distance um that we were planning and of course the problem is not only that there is the ocean and you can drown there uh, and that it's very cold you know down there with the, with the heavy currents but also uh, it was rumored to be full of uh, sharks and uh, so i did the flight and that's no fun that's not that, fun. That, that went really really well it was very interesting from the air as well and the whole whole uh, history of that place and everything and um I was able to just make it to the shore and there were people waiting for me and so on. We had great time and, and TV was there and um, I, I was not eaten by the sharks. So that was a good experience and nice adventure. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even a one limb, you know, here you are, okay. Right. And, uh, you're also thinking about that diving. Uh, you're a skydiver and a diver. Mm -hmm. And I think this is exciting. Like, have you ever come from the sky directly and then dived to the waters as well on the same trip? Uh, not really intentionally, but unintentionally yet, uh, because <laughs> <laughs> I had I had uh, I made a maybe mistake or something like that, and I had to land uh, in the ocean. And um, but anyway, not with the scuba gear. That would be the kind of James Bond stunt and can be made, but but that's a different kind of planning and, and so on. But yeah, they, they are two extremely interesting environments and and um yeah, completely different kind of environments because it's the other world down there. Oh, absolutely. What what happened when you did land on the on the waters? I just couldn't you... make it to the to the shore and so I had to get rid of my gear really really fast and so that you know I don't get entangled and and then I was close enough shore that I could just go in and sometimes we have boats there waiting for us in in case we need to be saved but uh I, I never was in that kind of situation but I have many friends who've been to that situation too so so we try to uh prepare for the worst but sometimes the you know worst can of course happen Absolutely. And even though we're positive people, we've known each other for a very long time since school time. Uh, we we do look at the serious side of the oceans and the skies. So we laugh here now, but of course, we remember all of that in our hearts and, and are not naive about these elements. But um, when I think about the oceans across the world, they are so different. Like you have the saying, uh, the Birdman motto is like, as above, so below. Mm -hmm. And what came to mind is like, as above the equator, so below. <laughs> <laughs> or is, is it all different? Like, of course, it has to be because of the climates. But very curious to hear, like, it can be so different in different sides of the world. And ocean depths are different, which makes everything, the water cycles different and everything. But when I think about the cold and the warm uh, air, the element must feel so different on your body when you jump. Like the the very southern ocean is almost impossible for even ships to go around. And when I think about the air that is so cold here up north where I'm located in Lapland, I could never imagine jumping from, from such cold uh, space. So how do you deal with that, these different feelings? Like you feel the cold water on your skin. It feels all, almost like some rocks hitting your skin. And then the 
winds are going back and forth. And so how do you handle your body and the landing in the way that you're always safe in these kind of um, conditions? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. Um, the cold factor um, is something that you have to take into uh, account and plan ahead, you know, for the different stages of the uh, entire jump. So so you have the ground temperature and, and where you prepare things before you go up. And and if the ground, ground te temperature is uh, too cold, for example, then you have to prepare yourself in, inside because otherwise things freeze. Like, for example, we use some rubber bands in our gear and 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 on and other technical things that can simply freeze. And if they if they freeze enough, you know they don't anymore function the way they are supposed to. So that's the ground preparation. Then, then we have to go up, and it, it and it can take anywhere between fifteen to to forty minutes. And um, temperature can change from zero to coldest I've been jumping was minus forty four. And and, wow. and and that's minus 44 and we have some sort of the the warmth inside the plane but as soon as you op open the plane you know the the cold hits you it, it hits you like a sledgehammer and that's when when you need to control your mind i mean you know it's cold you know it's going to freeze you you know that you have only certain time period of, that you can basically stand there before it starts doing too much damage to you so you have to control your mind during that time and just basically tell your mind not to care about that and and, and focus on the matters that you can uh, um, um, you can control. Then you get to the free fall <clears throat> and and you start flying average two hundred and twenty miles uh, kilometers an hour, sometimes faster. so so the cold. <laughs> Uh, of course, in increases in the square of the speed, and and so it can it, it just gets colder and colder and colder. And of course, it's going to be the parts in your body which are most far away from your center that freeze first. So it's going to be your toes, your fingers, uh, and and your head and your nose. I, I froze these uh, all these places many many times, you know, and that can be kind of painful. But you just have to keep functioning no matter what you also start losing the feeling in in your body because you have first of all so many clothes but then again you you start to get numb as well so so then then that's that's also a real challenge and then but you start coming down it starts getting warmer you open the parachute and and um and then you have to start working with your body, other other things there. And in spite of the cold, you still have to operate everything. And your fingers might not even work at all. But still, you have to make them work so that you can operate certain things. And and uh, and uh, like your parachute, for example, and in my case, wingsuit and and things like that. So yeah, cold can make it extremely challenging uh, as well. But when you're jumping uh, in the south and equator place and and so one that's like why we like to go there it's it's really warm it's beautiful it's nice we can jump without the shirt and uh and just enjoy it it's it's a pure joy so it depends sounds sounds just fascinating and what comes to mind is like how does a parachute endure cold is it uh, how does it tolerate the cold weather when you when you jumped they tolerate it really really good um um i can't re really remember any 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 issues things that it doesn't like to tolerate in the long run so much is like when we jump in the desert or places where there's lots of sand the sand starts to become like a sandpaper between and 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 it starts to um make some damage for the parachute and, and the lines and so on but the, the um, cold cold is quite okay B besides uh, uh wing any kind of wing was it parachute or your body or airplane it flies much 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 better in the thick air and the colder it gets the thick thicker the air except of course paradoxically the higher you go colder it gets but the air gets thinner <laughs> but when you get closer <laughs> to the ground and it's cold that that's when when everything carries much 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 better so that's very interesting it's it's a 
all the time you're dealing with the paradoxes. That is so interesting. And and the wingsuit that you have invented is is like amazing. Like a person can actually wear that and jump with it. And uh, so how does it feel up in the air when you have the wingsuit on? How does it feel to be in that element of the air in the free fall before the parachute is opened at the end? I, I think I told you this before, but uh, in the Point Break movie, there, there was this great line when they asked the same thing. And, and I think that the main character said that it feels like making love with the gods. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it feels incredible to be you, you. I mean, you really, you're really flying, and, and it feels like you're really flying. And and you remember that you have been flying, and you just have this incredible joy and freedom all around you. And 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 you feel kind of omnipotent when when everything is good, of course. When when it's not minus forty four degrees cold, for example, and and you have a great visibility and you have no threats around. That that's when you 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 feel kind of omnipotent. You think that you can fly on forever, but of course that's the kind of illusion as well. So so, but for a while you can you can maybe uh, um, fool yourself believing that you're kind of Superman. So for a <laughs> while that's fun. <laughs> so this is, this really is the perfect video for all fathers or the Father's Day. Everybody wants to be the Superman. I think yeah. and. And sometimes women, the superwoman, you know, Absolutely. especially here in Scandinavia, mm -hmm. we are we are warriors, all of us. So, hey, you know, very used to, used to the equal rights and all that. So, so that's how we are brought up. That we are really self sufficient and independent, and always uh, admiring adventures equally to men. Absolutely, so, I mean, they are male and female uh, birds who who both need to fly in order to support the family. And if they don't fly, they are penguins. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me a couple of people those as well. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of those around too. <laughs> That's so funny. I mean, often when we talk about the world and the oceans, uh, there's so many funny stories that I remember you have you have told of your experiences and when i think about the world map and all the oceans across um there's so much like to be explored and so much not uh, yet found especially of course in the deep waters but in relation to the air like when you're flying there you have been in such a luxury spot that you have been able to see the world from such a free free feeling and uh, these stories that you tell are so fascinating like you have uh, done this for so so many years and the skydiving suit and everything so it is an experience that not many people have shared so do, can you relate uh, or remember a story that that uh, is one of the top stories of your whole skydiving career that comes to mind. That was a special <laughs> experience. Hopefully not to, to bump into a hawk or something in the sky or or uh, any accidents happen, but something that really was a special experience that we can tell the fathers on this video as a super adventure that you can remember. Super adventure. Um... I always remember uh, this super adventure in, in uh, Venezuela I did. And uh, there I was hired to teach local skydivers, uh, novice skydivers, how, how to skydive. And so it happened that uh, there, there in Venezuela, they don't have too many places and too many professional skydivers there. And, and in that place, in the middle of the Venezuelan jungle, they, they, they also had their, their special forces training. And so I got to know this one one uh, guy who was a general of of this uh, Green Beret Special Forces, and he he hired me to to teach a couple of his uh, troops there because I, I he told me that they had some problems. And this story is quite long, so I make it extremely short, but just so that you can get the idea. And we come to the father's part, trust me. So anyway, um, 
I went after a couple of guys and I was just supposed to watch what's going on there, but they went out of, we, we jumped from the helicopter and they went out of the control right, right away. And the deal was that uh, I was not supposed to, to really communicate them or, or do anything like that, just to go to watch and then get, give feedback. But since they went out of the control, I had to go after them and I actually had to open their parachute because they were not themselves uh, able to. And this happened there twice. And uh, actually, they gave me the Medal of Honor for that. So anyway, the same guy, this uh, uh, general uh, who had hired me later on, uh, after a couple of days and these things had already happened, uh, he came to talk to me. He took me to the side very, very, very seriously and started to tell me his life story. So when he had been about 20 years old, he was part of the Venezuelan uh, uh, Navy. They, they went for the tour around the world and they had made a stop in Helsinki, Finland. And there he had a love affair with, with a, a Finnish woman. And, you know, then his, his uh, trip continued. But later on, he heard that he had a, a, a son in Finland whose name was Jari. <laughs> and he lived in Lahti, Finland. And, and, and he gave me this handwritten written, uh, uh, letter to his son from the father and asked me if I could find, find uh, this, this Finnish person who had the same name as me, who was about the same age as I was. And I said, okay, I don't even live in Finland anymore, but next time I go there, I promise I do my best. And so after, I, I, it was less than a year, year after, but anyway, I, I went to, to, to Helsinki and I actually found uh, uh, Jari and, and I was able to deliver that, that little letter from his father. And, and uh, it was obviously a really, really touching moment. And, and uh, I don't know if they were then, I, I don't know what happened after that at all, but, uh, but um, I never forget that story and, and how faith can take us, you know, to different places. And, 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 and especially when you have a father-son relationship, it's possible that, that uh, you, have, you have son or children that you never met. Absolutely, and and your life, like uh, you know, the element of the sky, but also life on the ground. So it's a life of a human, and you meet people across, and there are these stories. Sometimes some stories are funny, sometimes sad, sometimes quite touching. But when you travel across the world and you meet so many people, um, and live a life that is special, you know, the skydiving life is special you uh, also meet the elements of danger and um, different things that nature does and what life does. And you, you've practically survived um, a lot of, lot of uh, miraculous situations because it's not always that safe. So has your wife ever worried that will you come back home safe when you do? I'm sure she has, yes. <laughs> I'm sure she has, of, of course, mm -hmm. but the fact is about the life, of course, that we all survive all kinds of dangers every single day or all, all the time, but we are just not always really aware of those uh, dangers. But of course, you know, especially with the extreme sports, you become right away uh, aware of these things. And, and, and that's why they are memorable and things happen. But of course, we are all living a life with all kinds of dangerous things around us and so on. And that's the fact. But yeah, sure. Um, yeah, my wife has worried. <laughs> but then again, okay, I have to tell you this. Um, it, she just reminded me this uh, uh, only a few days ago, but she told me this story that, that this was like... Um, early period of time when we had just met and it's been about 20 years ago and and i took her to the drop so maybe one of the first first times and uh and i went to the plane and she looked apparently very very worried like really worried what's going on and then somebody else who i didn't even know who it was came to tell her not to worry that that um then he had apparently kind of analyzed me 
and said that that uh, you shouldn't worry too much about Yari because he's he's very um, kind of analytical what he's doing. <laughs> and after that, that was kind of a um, assuring thing for for my wife to to um, she kind of trusted that ana analysis at least that time, you know, and 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 maybe eased her up a little bit. So here we are with Yari Kuosman Birdman, and I'm so happy to say that Yari is cooperating with the project to the oceans project because he delights us and he brings us this view of his his life to us and tells us how he sees the world and water cycles, the winds and even the rains in the air. It's been really exciting to know you, Yari, and I'm very proud that you're cooperating with To The Oceans Project. So welcome on board. And your stories are sometimes even mind blowing because during this video, we're gonna show a couple of uh, uh, diving uh, and uh, also skydiving videos that you have uh, done. And those are just amazing that somebody can actually do that. Now, uh, you're a little bit above 50 years old. What happens when you get age? Are you going to continue? Four, four years above. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> with Yari, we, we were with Yari at the same uh, uh, areas and parties as, as teenagers. So Yari also knows my twin brother very well from, from a very long time ago. So we're the same age, uh, known each other for a long time. And I'm thinking when you get more age, are you still going to continue skydiving and all these ex experiences and adventures or will you ever retire? Right. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even have that kind of a word as uh, retiring in my vocabulary <laughs> at, at all. And uh, the, when I was asked this similar question uh, some, some time ago, my answer was something like that. Uh, does the fish stop swimming when it goes dancing so <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so of so course bad. you know we, we we are what we are and and what we are really made of if we know what we are made of and and uh, we follow our calling and so on and of course we can have a long break you know of, of doing something you know before but the essence that we have, you know, in, inside of us, that, that's still the same and that, that will never change. And and of course, it might be that the focus changes and and uh, and uh, we want to do something else uh, uh, really uh, um, a lot. But but um, like like they say about, um, I don't know, riding a, a bicycle or something, once you learn it, uh, you, you always can do it and so on. So so. No, I, now I haven't been jumping in, in a couple of years at all, but uh, I never retired for sure. And uh, of course, I don't know what will happen tomorrow, but but uh, I, I don't see any reason why um, uh, that, that in, in fact, that would be a hor horrible future if I would think that I would never fly again. We, we both are uh, also very big on intuitions and and uh, the senses and the non-seen world as well, which is a part of our normal. And when I think of aging, uh, the intuitions might even come much more stronger to, to play a role here because, you know, the intuitions was what nature made to um, guard us of, of danger. I always love that story when someone told me that when cavemen were in the cave and, and then the father would go and hunt for the family and the family was safe in the cave, the intuitions came to place when they needed to know where the bear would attack, which would be faster and bigger and stronger. So to you and I, intuitions are practically the normal and and I can just imagine when you are up there in the sky that the intuitions come to place really strongly. Do you have a story about that that comes to mind, how intuitions open something special for you when you were up there coming towards the ground? Sure. Uh, I have a really, really, really interesting story about that. And I don't know if that's intuition, although I, I would put that into that category, but... Uh, 
you know, please uh, <clears throat> don't don't be ang angry if I kind of miss uh, miss uh, place this uh, whole thing. But there was this one one jump I was making in Norway, base, base jump uh, uh, on the mountains, and <clears throat> all the conditions were perfect, perfect, perfect. But before the jump, I, I had this incredible uh, bell inside my head, and and that's something I had never heard before. It was it was uh, it was really like a church bell, and it, it was going long, 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 and 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 so I I immediately thought that okay, that's some side some some kind of warning, but <laughs> it's kind of um, self clear that when when you are about to make a base jump from from the mountain with a single parachute with the wingsuit, uh, you are in the dangerous place. So of course, so, something should be warning you, but but the, I had never heard that kind of uh, uh, warning side in, in, inside me, you know, before some jump. So I took it really seriously. So I tried to think absolutely everything and my packing and everything. And, and uh, I, I couldn't find any reason why not to jump except that warning. But I decided to jump anyway. So so I jumped and it started to go really, really fine. It was it was really incredible uh, uh, flight until <laughs> almost to the end, because um, <clears throat> then I w went to open my parachute and, and um, my pilot chute got into verbal. I think I told you this before, but but anyway, that was extremely co close call. And, and the reason that I'm still here telling you this story was that because that warning bell during my flight, uh was increasing and increasing and increasing i just decided to to kind of stop the flying part and and open the parachute a little bit sooner than i would have normally made and because i gave myself few seconds extra time and i'm talking just a few seconds extra time that saved my life so 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 that that warning warning bell in, in inside me and and um yeah it, and it has never happened like that since I, I and so it's it's not the, something that happen happen often, but I I learn how to listen my my um, intuition or 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 to see the signs from the environment too. You know, I I just learn how to look at those, how to listen things and and so on. And if I see or hear something or smell something really extraordinary, it just means that you have to pay attention. Absolutely, and. And I have to say to men that it is not uh, a feminine thing to be intuitive. You know, it, it was always a part of people. Mm -hmm. And um, there are many stories of those who were in the battle battlefields that had intuitive messages before something happened. So mm -hmm. it's kind of something that nature gave us, you know, in the way that uh, the senses sometimes are not enough, and especially when we get age, we, we need other things and, and we need uh, wisdom and, and awareness and all that. And hopefully some luck too. Mm -hmm. But um, your your profession is so interesting. And uh, I would like to hear about the diving side as well. Which areas have been your favorite places that you have dived? And which animals and ocean marine creatures were intriguing and exciting? I've been diving in Caribbean and and uh, Middle Eastern areas, and 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 then in uh, Asia. And, and but by far, I've been driving most in Asia. So my my best best experiences are from there. And I would say that the most incredible uh, things what I've seen down down there are octopus and manta ray and all kinds of snakes. You know, it's it's extremely interesting things because octopus it can have a camouflage and, and it can become a rock or or something i mean it's just not from this world what those those uh things can do <laughs> unbelievable and then you have mantaroy that is basically a a bird but in the in the ocean and it's fly, flying there and it's just majestic and they are so big and they come as a family so flocks and they are very curious and they and you can i mean the, all these things are intelligent that's for sure i mean they are conscious but they are living on the other planet so to speak so they they are living in other reality but they are definitely in the intelligent and and then of course snakes and and a school of fish okay 
you have this incredible school of fish, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of fish can be in, in the one group, but it's 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 behaving there and, and moving as one fish. I, I mean, that's Absolutely. also something incredible. And and it's almost like when and when you go there, they some some of the fish or, or uh, living things are really aware that you are there and they are very curious and they come to check you out and and so on and some just are completely um they just don't care about you at all it's almost like they don't see you sounds like they all have their own character as well yeah you know, one manta ray is not the same as the other one and, uh-huh. uh, that's so fascinating what do you think about the areas in the ocean where the the sunlight does not penetrate and it's there's not not much light anymore left what do you think about the life, the marine life, in those areas where there's no light? Yeah, I, I don't have uh, myself experiences in, in those time of death uh, where you can't see anything at all. But I've been always very fascinated uh, by, by the dark um, as well. And, and of course, by the def- definition, I mean, if you go there, you have to have a flashlight or something like that that to see. But of course, it's full of life there as well. And they're just adapted to that different uh, reality in the very, very different way. But they have a full life there in the dark as well. And then, of course, they, they because it is a different kind of reality, they're, they're, the way life works in that kind of environment can be quite different, of course, than, than places where, where we have this visual, visual type of uh, survival um senses and and so on so yeah it's fascinating it, it's super fascinating it is and the conditions you know the pressure and, and uh-huh. the kind of temperatures and all that um i would like to tell all the viewers that we will do a wonderful project in 2025 with the Ari about diving and he will be doing skydiving and diving with us with To the Oceans Project. So we will uh, go to areas where the tourists usually can't go. And then Yari will do a special interview for us. And we will film that and then uh, release it as a video as well. But it will be in 2025. And To the Oceans Project is interested in uh, researching different experiences with the areas of the oceans where the light is not either so the oceans are our thing in many ways yari how would you like to end this video with a very legendary story of your <laughs> adventures i can Another never legend. get enough of those i just love to hear them and so let's let's uh, give a really good story to the fathers oh and something that is special almost like indian Jones, you know, from the movies. <laughs> Let me think of something that comes to my mind. <laughs> because when you put me to the spot, it's like, okay, okay, I, I don't, I don't know even where to go. I don't even know where to go with this. Um, one of my favorite one. Um, I can't remember if I told you this already, so stop me if if I did, but. Um, I was teaching people in in Denmark, and the weather conditions uh, um, during that weekend they were extremely uh, sketchy uh, to say the least. So it was a lot of cloud everywhere. So we had no visibility really anywhere. We had to be jumping, uh, basically trusting the pilot uh, and, and the GPS when, when they told us, "Okay, we're in the right place." But when when we got out, we knew about uh, uh, which direction to go. But we couldn't have any visuals. Now, this otherwise, you know, it's it's uh, very risky in in every case because you don't really know where you're ending up if you don't know where you are flying. And we are flying there many many kilometers at the time. So <clears throat> the problem with this place was that it was uh, by the beach, and and there was the ocean uh, uh, on on the other side. So we got out and and. Uh, and my my student started to to fly. Who was the local, and and he was experienced. I I thought he knew that he, what he was doing, and he started to fly the other way. And I I, I went to um, basically fly fly next to him or something like that. And and um, 
we were completely in the cloud. And I just knew that we are, we are lost, but I didn't want, want to let him be alone there or something like that. And we just keep flying, flying. And then I start to show him that, okay, um, <clears throat> where is the land? Where is the land? And and then through <laughs> some cloud, something like that, after a long time, we start seeing some land. And I'm like, Oof, okay, okay, great. There is, there is the land. And then we go through the clouds and land is there. And... Um, we land. I could not recognize that place at all because we have been flying so far away. <clears throat> and, and I landed. I couldn't even see the airport. Like I could not see the airport in, anywhere. I'm like, wow, we are really, really far away. <clears throat> so so I landed next to, to the uh, one one street there. It was a rural ar area and, and um, nobody was around. So I, I landed and then I saw one, one old lady jogging there towards me and she looked at me like I was the UFO or something like that <laughs> with my parachute, you know, and the wingsuit. And I said, hey, excuse me, excuse me. Um, could you please point out where the airport is so that I know which way to I start walking? And she looked at me like I was really like crazy or something like that. And, and she's like, well, it's not on this island. It's on the other island. <laughs> we had oh, crossed no. the sea yeah. from that island and, and uh, a few kilometers and went to another island and, and landed on that side. So so that was a very adventurous flight. And, you know, we both were okay and so on, but but it, uh, it, was, it was quite exciting uh, experience. That sounds amazing. And I'm just imagining all that wind, you know, swifting you away. It must have felt really, really... Um, yeah, it's really stepping into the un un unknown when, when these kind of things happen. I, I mean, because you just don't see anything at all. Nothing. So so you just end up where you end up. Yari Kuosma Birdman is cooperating with us to the Oceans Project, and I'm so proud to have you on board, Yari. You have such fun stories, and we've made many videos so far. And just to follow your skydiving adventures and exploring and all these beautiful, beautiful experiences you've had. Very proud to have you on board, and thank you for joining us. And your views about the oceans, the skies, life, all these fun stories will be shared with this with this project. And 2025, we will have with Yari Kuosman this special video that we will make of his adventures and skydiving and diving experiences then that he makes for the project. So Yari, what would you like to say to all the listeners and the viewers of To The Oceans Project? Well, I'm, first of all, I'm extremely proud. I'm very happy to be part of it. And I'm looking forward to meet the rest of the team as well. And of course, this future possible um, and projects that we are going to do, I, I hope that we can take people for much more than just a ride because we are taken for the flight and we are taken for them to the uh, dive. Um, and perhaps, you know, we can... We can um, raise some really interesting not only awareness about the main subject which is the oceans but but um many, many other things that are part of our human development you know and this adventure life and i think that we 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 have a great opportunity to take take uh, um our our audience and the people who are involved and and many more to to this kind of uh special uh, uh, realization of the life. Yari Kuosma is a super adventurer to all the all the viewers, I would like to tell, but he's also a mystical man, uh, a very, um, you could say, even intuitive and meditative and has strong senses about life. But a lot of experiences with sky and nature and the oceans, but... You also have a deep relationship to the mystical side. So this is delightful for To The Oceans Project that we can talk about the non-visible and visible of nature and the winds and skies as well. 
So you have so much to tell us, and I'm grateful that you joined our team. Thank you for coming, and we're looking forward to cooperating with you. Most welcome, Sini, and uh, I'm also lo looking forward to touch this uh, quite um, occult subject, um, but they are very important because I, I think that you know, in the normal life, we maybe touch about 5% of the thing, but then there is 95%, which is in, invisible. But this invisible, just like uh, you asked me the question about the, the dark side of the ocean, where, where the light does not uh, go. The, so the same same thing about this this universe of ours, 90, 95% or whatever huge part is, is uh, something called dark matter. So what is that? What is the dark matter? And I think that, you know, that's also something that we can touch later on in, in other episodes and so on. Because they affect our lives. <laughs> Absolutely. And there's so much to explore of the world and the oceans. And mm -hmm. when we think how deep they can go, it's just so filled with mystical stories and things people haven't found yet. And I'm so grateful that AI is now researching the um, ocean bed. And I'm just looking forward to these findings that they will release by uh, 2030. So we are living in really interesting times regarding nature and oceans and the skies. So we're just beginning our cooperation. So there's many years to come. And thank you, Yari. And just keep safe, you know, safe up there when you're dive, skydiving and diving. So, so take good care of yourself. And uh, we'll hear more from you very soon. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it.